Hello everyone, I'm Kevin, otherwise known as Form BX257, here to bring you another 1980s and 90s G.I. Joe toy review. This video is one of a series of four looking at the 1990 G.I. Joe sub-team Sky Patrol. The series consists of six figures, all with working silver foil parachutes, and four vehicles, all with vac metalized silver chrome bodies. They were all sold separately, and the vehicles had no designated driver or pilot. And for my fourth and final Sky Patrol video, I'm going to be taking a look at a Sky Patrol Weapon Specialist Drop Zone and the Sky Raven. Now, as I've said before, none of the Sky Patrol characters or vehicles made any appearance in the old Marvel comic run of G.I. Joe, but they all make appearance in the 1990 Deke Animated Television series. Both Drop Zone and the Sky Raven make their first appearance in the episode titled D-Day at Alcatraz Part 1. And for my final Sky Patrol figure, we're going to be taking a look at Drop Zone. More specifically, his accessories. And first, I'll take a look at the common accessory that all Sky Patrol figures had. And that is the backpack for the parachute pack. The backpack has the same sculpt. And were different colors for each of the figures. Except for, well, maybe Drop Zone and Airwave. Now, these might be different shades. I don't know if this is coming out in the... In the video, it could just be my eyes, but they look like the same shade of brown to me. Anyway, you pull the ripcord, you open this thing up, and the folded silver foil parachute would normally be inside, but I don't have it in here. But this is what the silver foil parachute would look like. And this is what the design on here, which might be a little bit hard to see, but it's actually an eagle in flight with a lightning bolt behind it. It's a rather big parachute because it is a working parachute and uh, needs the surface area. Anyway, taking a look at Drop Zone's accessories. He comes with a machine gun. That's what it's called on the uh, contents of the card. It's not very specific, which is kind of unfortunate. We don't get a particular name for these types of accessories. Now, as you can see, it's just one piece with... Uh, well, it's a double-barreled machine cannon, really. Rather a lot like a uh, multi-barreled weapon that Static Line came with. Although Static Lines is kind of strange looking, whereas this looks a little bit more conventional, to be honest. Has detail all the way around it, actually. That's very nice. And the figure comes with a removable helmet with a liftable visor. The helmet is actually fairly plain considering the, uh, the other Sky Patrol members tended to have uh, a little bit of detail on their helmets, but this one is just kind of plain. All the Sky Patrol figures are, from the neck down, remolds of previous driver figures. And in this case, Drop Zone's mold donor was... The Cobra Night Raven Pilot 1986 Strato Viper. Very appropriate seeing as we actually have a Night Raven remold in the Sky Patrol line, which is one of the reasons why I actually do use Drop Zone as the pilot for my Sky Raven. However, I don't mean to imply that only figures with the Strato Viper body mold will fit perfectly inside of the uh, cockpit. Well, I did complain that the cockpit seemed a little bit cramped when put into the Sky Raven. I have to say that basically any figure can really fit in here and fit very well. Although, personally, I actually think that this goes very well because he seems to have those Cadbury caramel colors which go very well with the uh, caramel colored plastic which they've used for the cockpit seats here. While the accessories were unique, the head sculpts were also unique for all the Sky Patrol figures. Let's take a look at his face. 
If you're looking for a drop zone figure on the aftermarket, he's a fairly sturdy figure and it's fairly easy to find him complete with all of its parts. However, you do have to look out for the condition of his machine gun. Not only do the handles on the ends kind of snap off, these braces which are supposed to go up onto his uh, chest can also be broken off as well. As you can see, they're a fairly thin plastic. Of course, the other thing which is pretty much common to all the Sky Patrol figures that you have to look out for is whether or not they actually have the parachute in them, well, in the backpack portion, because that's really what really bumps up the price on the aftermarket for these figures. They're very, very popular with collectors on the aftermarket, so they do go for quite a bit more than what your average figure from the same year might go for. I touched upon this in previous reviews, but Sky Patrol figures were the first premium sub-team. Prior non-store exclusive sub-teams like Tiger Force and Python Patrol were priced the same as basic single figures. However, Sky Patrol figures were priced a dollar extra or more. In today's economy, that doesn't mean much, but in 1990, that was a striking difference. To give you that premium feel, the cards were larger than the standard basic figure card. Did they need the extra space for the large parachute and backpack? Well, apparently not, as Europe got a version of Static Line that fit just perfectly on the standard card. Certainly the crown jewel of any Sky Patrol collection has to be the Sky Raven. The mole was originally based on the 1986 Cobra Night Raven, which was an all-black SR-71 Blackbird inspired design. And a lot of collectors really tend to think of that as the most beautiful jet in the entire vintage G.I. Joe series. However, with the Sky Ravens all chrome and all the same features, except for one, of the original 1986 Night Raven, I think that Sky Raven actually gives it kind of a run for its money in the most beautiful department. The Sky Raven has all the same features as the Night Raven, but I'll go through them fairly quickly anyway. Starting with the lowering cockpit. And you can actually take the seats completely out. Just for ease of putting the pilot figures in there. I'm just going to put the drop zone figure in there. And maybe a static line figure in the back. Just to show you that it does fit in very, very well. Uh, one thing I noted with the Night Raven is that Figures always seem to be kind of squished up in there. As a matter of fact, you do have to kind of angle this whole thing in here into the hole and then onto the um, lower fuselage cockpit tray thing here. And then raise it all up. But still, I think they fit really well in there. Above that, we have this raising and lowering little gun with an air brake cover over it. The air brake cover is something which can pop off fairly easily. However, interestingly enough, this is the same color and even part number as the original Night Raven. So, even though it was kind of a hard thing to get on the Night Raven, uh, you can swap these things out. Behind that, we have two opening engine covers just on the engines. Again, these are the same black parts which are from the Night Raven. Behind that, we have these air brakes which are raised in this position right now because they're actually part of the landing gear mechanism. And we also have a little rubber tailpiece here, which again is the same thing as we get on the Night Raven. Same with the back wings. They're the same mold and same color as the Night Ravens as well. And turning this shiny craft over, we have a look at the landing gear actuator lever. We'll pull it back. And all three of the landing gear retract. Pull it forward. They pop out again. Of course, the same thing happens with the air brakes on the top. They flip in and flip out. Returning to the bottom, we have a couple of missile pods. 
the pods themselves are easily removable and are, I guess, meant to be removed. I never really could figure that out on the uh, actual Night Raven itself. And the missiles are removable. Exactly the same mold as the Night Ravens, except for the color, of course. In the middle, we have a lowering bomb rack. Just like on the Night Raven. Again, we have white bombs, which are the same color as the missiles. And taking a closer look at the landing gear, these are exactly the same as the ones on the Night Raven. The same rubber tires, they all freely roll, the same silver hubcaps, and the same dark gray struts. The only thing that's different, of course, is the uh, landing gear flaps themselves. They're a jet black, which matches the black of the bottom of the Sky Raven. However, on the bottom of the Night Raven, it was a light blue. As I mentioned, the Sky Raven has all the same features as the 1986 Cobra Night Raven, except for one thing, which is it does not have a drone to attach to the back. Now, it still has the peg, which is useful. So if you had a Night Raven drone, you could attach it back there. Or I would suggest tracking down a 1989 Crusader, which came with an Avenger drone which was basically a G.I. Joe version of this, but in white plastic. And as you can see, it attaches just fine. And here's a comparison between the Sky Raven and the Night Raven in all their 26 inch long glory. Yeah, these jets are huge. And you do have to keep that in mind if you're buying one for display. However, like I said before, the Sky Raven, and even the Night Raven to some degree, are probably jewels in some people's collections, so you will afford them the right amount of space for display. And speaking of which, let's just take off the drone here to show you that I have my tail fins on my Night Raven retro blasting style pointed inwards, which is an option that you can do, even though they are meant to go outwards like that. If you're looking for a Sky Raven on the aftermarket, I have to say that it's a lot easier to find one complete with all of its parts than it is the Sky Havoc, which I mentioned in its review. However, the Sky Raven is the most valuable Sky Patrol toy. Its premium has really skyrocketed on the aftermarket because collectors really love this thing. And, well, I can see why. But it also has a few, uh, quite a few parts which are meant to come off and can be easily lost as well as a lot of parts which are not meant to come off but could still be popped off and very easily lost. I mean, we still have two bombs, the four missiles, the two pods, and the uh, cockpit interior, but we also have things like the rear gun, the gun's air brake cover, two engine covers, the two uh, tail fins. We have the, not only the connector for the uh, bottom of the cockpit, but the cockpit tray itself. We have the bomb bay, and of course the landing gear and the three landing gear flaps. But on top of that huge list of parts which you still have to look out for, you also have to look out for the condition of the vehicle as well. Unfortunately, like I've said many times throughout the Sky Patrol reviews, three of the four Sky Patrol chromed vehicles were made in Brazil except for the Sky Raven. It was made in the U.S. Now, I don't know if that has anything to do with it. I have a theory that it doesn't, but a lot of people have kind of speculated that the chrome finish on the Sky Raven is inferior. It's very thin. It's very prone to being scratched at the littlest nick. And even if you leave it mint like this, it still has the problem of 
um, oxidizing terribly over time. The chrome either flakes off or becomes dull beyond being able to buff it back to its shiny self. Even my example, even though it's very, very shiny, it has a lot of spots, which like here, for instance, it's really hard to see because, like I said, I've, I've kind of buffed this with extreme care so that I don't buff the chrome completely off. But it still has, like, little bits like that. And I'm kind of worried that this thing will go dull over time fairly easily. And it, they usually do. However, like I said, I don't think it has exactly... Um, you know, being made in the U.S. I don't think that's exactly the reason why it's so thin, like thinner than the others. I think the reason why is because Hasbro may have budgeted the same amount of chroming per vehicle. And the fact of the matter is, is that the Sky Raven has the most surface area of any of the Sky Patrol vehicles. So obviously, if you spread that out, it's going to get thin. So finding one on the aftermarket complete with all of its parts... And on top of that, still being really shiny is incredibly rare. And that's one of the reasons why collectors are willing to pay such a high premium for this toy. And in this case, Drop Zone is the mold donor. Had all the same features as the 1989. You could still attach it to here. Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.